Okay, so with all the negative news uh, surrounding Manchester United and Mason Greenwood today, it's kind of nice to have a distraction with the Africa Cup of Nations. The final quarter-final took place between Senegal and Equatorial Guinea. It's finished 3-1 to Senegal uh, on the night, although it was actually quite an even game at times. Um, just a 10-minute spell in the second half uh, has, has won the game for Senegal. There's also the VAR controversy surrounding the non-penalty that, in my mind, should have been a penalty. Um, and for the first... 65 minutes it was a very even game and was deservedly 1-1 at that point uh, it's 1-0 at half time and with Senegal's first clear cut opportunity uh, Diadou scores the goal but Sadio Mane in the build up for the goal that final pass is a brilliantly weighted and executed pass brilliant vision by Sadio Mane who I think is been Senegal's most um, consistent player at this tournament and they haven't scored a lot of goals so far they've doubled their goal tally in a game uh, they've been struggling to score goals in this tournament so far, uh, this was their best performance of the tournament so far as well. And that calmed the, the, the Senegalese nerves. Before that, it was a very even, if not scrappy game. Equatorial Guinea, very good in possession, especially in the middle third of the field. Uh, it was that final cutting edge ball they were lacking somewhat. And Edouard Mendy did not have a lot to do in the first half in the Senegalese goal. Um, and that first goal, it does calm the nerves, but Senegal hadn't been convincing up to that point. Uh, they were behind in the possession stats. Um, you know, they were being outplayed at that point. Uh, not very calm of possession, very scrappy, a lot of misplaced passes, bitty fouls. But at half-time, they're 1-0 up. While they're not comfortable, they, that's something to build on. But after half-time, Equatorial Guinea were the better side. They came out uh, the better team. And then there's the, the VAR controversy. Now, in my opinion, yeah, that's a penalty. Um, it's the lack of consistency and the lack of, you know... <sighs> The referee gives it as a penalty. It, it is handball. Um, and it is the lack of consistency with VAR. It doesn't matter if it's international tournaments or domestic league games or, or cup competitions. It has been very, very frustrating being a sports fan when you have that technology that it is not consistently used. If that's not handball in one game and it's handball in another, that is a head scratcher. I think the players are a bit frustrated with it. I think coaches are frustrated with it. I think fans are frustrated with it. Now, you can say that's not a penalty and it's accidental, which it is. Um, but I think they need to clarify the handball rule, simplify it, and then we don't have this discussion going forward because the referee on the field has a good, clear vision of it, gives it as a penalty straight away. The VAR you know, official says you want to have a look at this, and then he changes his decision. Um, I don't think that was a glaring, clear and obvious error. I think you know, if the referee doesn't give it as a penalty, I think you could possibly argue, OK, we've seen them not given before with the assistance of VAR, and then the VAR has overturned that. So again, the lack of consistency, um, it wasn't clear and obvious that it was an error. But it, that doesn't deter Equatorial Guinea because Yannick uh, Bugula scores the goal in the 57th minute, and that was Equatorial Guinea's best bit of passage of play, very similar to Senegal's first goal, very similar goal in the sense that it, it was the best passage of play in an attacking standpoint from Equatorial Guinea, and a great finish, and that brings the game to life, both sides suddenly up their game, the intensity goes up, the pace of the game goes up, and, and Senegal uh, you know, are in a game, <coughs> you know, they are heavily favoured favored in this game, Equatorial Guinea are the underdogs, but Senegal had to up their game, and Ali Ucisa, the Senegalese manager, uh, makes two key changes that, that turn the game, win them the game. And what is also interesting is the attacks come down the left-hand side, which is where Sadio Mane um, has been playing uh, on the left of, 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 of Senegalese attack. Kiate, uh, his goal, he just uh, beats the keeper to the ball. He, he, the desire to want it more. Uh, very good finish. Um, the drive, the energy, fresh legs wins the battle for the ball and, and it's in the back of the net. And that was on 69 minutes. And then Ismail Saar, um, that's a great run, but it's great build-up play down the Senegalese left. Uh, the defence, they, 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 they lose their runners, they lose their markers, they're looking a bit tired, they are exposed. The final ball by Cease uh, to Ismail Saar is brilliant. And Ismail Saar, it's a great run. He's not been tracked by the defender. Ghosts in and uh, you know scores a, a very well-deserved finish. He has been hampered by injury this season. Watford, his club didn't want him to go to this tournament. Um, and since he's been at the tournament, his manager's been sacked. So he's going to come back to a Watford team with a new manager um, and in the relegation zone. So a lot has changed since he joined Senegalese camp for this tournament. 
coming back, different manager, different training techniques, different atmosphere at Watford. But that was a brilliant goal, and he, he showed his quality and, and what I think Watford have, have been missing this season with him out injured. However, that wasn't the end of it. There were still chances for both sides. Edouard Mendy uh, in, in Senegalese goal. There's a reason why he's competing to be Chelsea's number one goalkeeper. He's a world-class goalkeeper. Very underrated, in my opinion. Um, and while Senegal haven't been scoring a lot of goals, they haven't been conceding a lot of goals either. And uh, Edouard Mendy's part of the reason for that. Um, and Equatorial Guinea still were trying to create. They were still pushing Senegal on the counter-attack. Looked dangerous. So that didn't seem like the end of the scoring, although it was. Um, out of the African Cup of Nations games that I've I've watched, and that's only been a handful, that's the best game I've seen so far. Obviously, we've got Burkina Faso, Egypt, Senegal and Cameroon in the semi-finals. They're going to be played on Wednesday and Thursday next week, as I'm recording this video. And, of course, the final is, is next weekend. There's only three matches left. And, um, yeah, we've got two teams that have never won the tournament before. And then you've got Cameroon and Egypt that obviously are serial winners. And Senegal obviously want to, to win their first title. And Burkina Faso... Again, the underdogs making it to the semi-finals. Dark horses could be quite dangerous. There's a reason why these four teams have made it to the semi-final. Uh, they've been the most consistent, uh, if not the most e expressive, because Egypt and Senegal haven't scored a lot of goals. Um, so goal scoring has been an issue for these sides. Although Senegal seem to find their goal scoring boots this evening uh, and doubled their goal tally uh, in the tournament. Uh, but... It, it, it looks like it could be a very interesting and unpredictable semi-final matchup uh, that we have for both uh, for both semi-finals. Of course, we, we might have a Senegalese, you know, uh, in the final, and that will be a, a notch on the belt for Ali Ucise. Um He's aiming to be the first Senegalese coach to get to back-to-back -back World Cups. Of course, missing out uh, to Algeria, obviously, in the last tournament, making the final and, and not taking that next step. This Senegalese side look. It's stacked with talent uh, playing in the top European leagues, uh, but they've you know, got a tough test ahead. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts below, and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.